Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to show you how to do a confidence interval estimate of a population percentage. I'm going to call this lecture 16.5C, um, where I'm showing you how to do this using SPSS. You recall that what we have are two variables. Basically, measure one if they're a Democrat or zero if they're a Republican. We would pretend that maybe you work for the Democratic Party and we wanted to see what percentage of the population is going to vote for our candidate. So earlier, we had a survey question that asked, are you planning on voting for the Democrat, the Republican, or the other? Okay, and we recoded that into a variable where it was one is Democrat. So whatever you're interested in doing a confidence interval, the percentage, you make that one and the other one is zero. And then to make the math easier, what we did is we went and recoded that one into where Democrats were 100 and Republicans were zero. So we're pretending that's 100%, that's 0%. Again, if you wanted to do what percentage we're going to vote for the Republicans, you would just recode it where Republicans were 100%, etc. Okay, so all we're doing is saving ourselves a little bit of math, um, but we could absolutely positively do the same thing with this variable. We just pretend that 1.0 equals 100%. And that equals 0%. So it's just a matter of decimal points. Okay, so we would go, so we've done this to trick SPSS, basically. And it's going to come out very, very similar if we did it by hand. And you'll see that. And I made a lecture where I show you the math by hand. It comes out slightly different due to rounding, as you'll see when you read the actual text lecture. Okay, so we go compare means, one sample t-test. This is exactly what we did for lecture 16C when we did a confidence interval estimate of the mean, but we're going to use this same command to do a confidence interval estimate of the population percentage. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna do two variables at a time so you can see how it's just a matter of differences of decimals. Move both of those variables over, push okay. Now it's just done two variables at once. You'll see that we've tricked SPSS where we think this is the pop the excuse me sample percentage of 53 that's so also 53 percent we've just multiplied that by 100 essentially you'll see all of these things here are just different in decimal points okay so over here you see that's 43.05 that's 43.05 with rounding so essentially they're the same thing Okay, so basically, I like this because then I don't have to do math down here, but you could absolutely use that other variable right here and you'd get the same answer. So what this means is we could be 95% confident that the percentage of the population planning on voting for the Democrat is between 43% and 63%. I've just rounded that up from 62.9. I've rounded that down from 43.04. When you look at the text lecture, you'll see there's a slightly... Um, different in terms of the exact number, but when you round them, it comes out exactly the same. Okay, so this is the technique for getting a confidence interval estimate of the percentage. Again, we just went analyze, compare means, one sample t-test, moved our variables over, it looked like that. I'm going to do it one at a time now, just use the one over there. Move that over, keep that at zero, press OK. Now you just have the same output, but now it's just one variable at a time. You'll notice that these numbers are the same as that, and this box is the same as the bottom box over there. Okay? So that's all you need to do.